This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hi, welcome aboard and happy Halloween to everybody. Here we are at uh, Think Tech Hawaii and I have my co-host, Natalie. She's the farm manager at Olamana Gardens and my right hand and left hand person. Aloha. That's it. She's double handed. Well, we got some exciting stuff to share with you today. Uh, first off, news wise, current events is you have till November the 6th, that gives you about six days from now, to sign up to go down to the Big Island for an all day conference. It's at the uh, Nelha, N E L H A, and that is that uh, big uh, aquaponics aquaculture setup at the end of the uh, airport runway. And uh, so if you land at Kona, Kailua Kona on the Big Island, you will see it when you fly in. That's all those big uh, algae tanks mm -hmm. and sorts of that going down. And what's special about it is this is the first of a series of planning conferences getting ready for 2020. We're going to host an international conference here. Now Natalie and I got to participate with Dr. Benny Ron. Um, yes. That was about two years, three years ago. And we did the worldwide um, uh, conference and a Pacific conference. And when they flew in people from Israel, from Germany, from China, Madagascar, from all over the world, they flew them in here. And there were about 350 of us attended that. And Natalie and I got to be presenters at mm -hmm. it. So we're going to be flying down. This is coming up. The event itself is on November 14th, I do believe. And uh, for information on it, you can go to our web page or they have their own web page uh, advertising it. And uh, Natalie will pull up the information for me. That'd be great. And uh, it's only $50. It's on and 16th. when I say only $50, it goes from 8.30 in the morning to 7 at night. They feed you lunch. They feed you dinner. Yeah. Right? And you're getting to meet with all the movers and shakers. Yeah. And so the title of the thing is... Um, for Blue Hawaii, and it's it basically how to promote aquaculture and aquaponics in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And down in Kailua Kona, the big thing is the offshore fishing, where they hang the nets down in the water, and um, and then they graze the fish out in the open ocean. And at this Niha station there, mm -hmm. uh, Natalie and I have gone down. We go down about every six months or so, and that's where they breed the little babies. So they breed the little babies up, and then they move them out into the ocean, and they grow them out. Yeah. So every time we go to one of these conferences, one of the things you get is a free tour of the place. Mm -hmm. So we get to see the abalone growing. Mm -hmm. uh, these are million dollar operations. So it's a real treat to go. And so for the $50, I mean, there are some people who spend that on a dinner alone. But this is an all day conference and uh, really looking forward to it. And while we're down on the Big Island, what else are we gonna be doing, Natty? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna be doing a workshop Glenn has a um, airlift pump or what we do different in aquaponics mm -hmm. at the YWAM University of the Nations yeah right there in Kailua Kona uh -huh. so that's about a 1200 student body there at that college it's a four-year college they specialize in training missionaries and uh, you know and like if people want to go out and be a missionary for whatever their religion is when they go out, they need to know how to conduct themselves, what to do. But one of the things they found out, um, whatever book you're carrying, be it in a Bible or whatever the source of your foundation of your religion, when these missionaries go out, they need to have practical skills and that. They need to be of a benefit to the community. Fix a roof, fix a solar cell, do aquaponic systems, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So they have courses in what they call applied engineering. So if you are a missionary and you show up in a community, you can do something more than just preach at them or share your message. There's something to a practical, physical aspect to it. And so we've been going down there for several years. Yes. And uh, we're going to be doing uh, workshops down there on the 15th and 16th on the college campus. And uh, you can go to our webpage at www.olamontagardens.com and you can sign up for them. Um, it's great stuff, and they have a really nice aquaponic system yeah. at this University of Nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, YWAM, by the way, stands for Youth on a Mission, okay, mm -hmm. and Will and Young. And so it's anyway, they're a really cool bunch of people. I met these people over on Kauai after Hurricane Iniki. 
they sent about 40 or 50 people over there and we built a camp for them. And they went out and volunteered in the community. Everything from tarping houses to food kitchens, the whole thing. Wow. And uh, so a great bunch of people to work with. And it's kind of funny, when you meet them, you start getting postcards. They go to Russia, they go to Israel, they go to India. So they go all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's a passport to travel. It reminds me very, very much out at BYU with the Mormons. Yes. Is when you pull in, they have a series of flags around a circle that, where you drive around. And it, uh, I'm going to paraphrase it, but basically there's a big sign there. And it says, you come here to learn you leave to serve, mm -hmm. and that is it. So what they're trying to do is teach people things that they can take out to the world on a very practical level. Yeah. And, uh, and that's where we went down to um, with Master Cho mm -hmm. when he had his first Korean natural farming seminar here mm -hmm. in the Big Island. In Hilo. Yes, in yeah. Hilo, and we spent the week with him in Hilo, and right. then we went on farm tours. For two days we yeah. toured farms. Yes, yeah. and that was one of the places yeah, yeah. that we was able to go and see yeah. what they're doing now, there. Now keep in mind, we're, we're south of Hilo, we're down in the Puna area, yeah. and they were hoping to have 50 people show up. Mm -hmm. And somebody did some fundraising, got a grant, about $10,000, to mm -hmm. bring this master show over from South Korea, mm -hmm. and he came there to do it. We not only had 50 people, we had 100 people then 150 people, then 200 people. Yeah. And we had to move the venue, the University of Hawaii, to their agricultural station. And they mm -hmm. said, don't worry about it. You'll never fill it up. It can hold 300 people, <laughs> open air pavilion. Well, we had 350 had people, people come. And again, it was one of these things, $50 for a workshop. Mm -hmm. And that's just, uh, they find out if people pay 50 bucks, they show up. If you say it's free, maybe they go, maybe they don't yeah. go. But a lot of these things, the seating gets limited because they do get oversubscribed. Yeah. So if you're interested in aquaponics or aquaculture, um, you probably pay more for the plane ticket than you do to get into the thing. Like our plane ticket is $75 to get down there. Mm -hmm. but. On the other hand, for a $50 all-day conference uh, with your peers, uh, with a lot of university people, a lot of industry people, and you get to see what's really happening. And that. But then when we do over at the college the next day, we'll be doing the workshops over there. On Saturday. On Saturday. Yeah, yes. actually a day and a half later. Yes. We're going to be doing it there and giving tours of their facility. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's a no charge thing to come over and take a tour of their facility. They open it to the public. But a great group of students. And there, that'll be a hands-on day. And because uh, mm -hmm. like when we do the workshop at, at the uh, uh, nail hall, there'll be a lot of PowerPoint presentations. You'll be in an air yeah. conditioned room. Yeah, and you, and you go out and tour the facilities. But when we do the workshop over at the University of Nations, that's all hands-on, outdoors, open air pavilion. And that's because my stuff is messy. Get wet. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have some videos that we shot for you just to give you an idea of what we do with the air pumps and that. And if they could run those videos now, I'll share with you and narrate it for you and tell you about them and what we got going. So this is a little 12 volt battery and a little $39 bilge pump. And that is a Glen Turi, named after yours truly. And what this does is when you have a power failure, you'll be able to take this and put it in the water and aerate it. So I have a little aquarium set up in my backyard just for show and tell time. So here we are, we have this thing set up and you can see there that when you turn on the little 12 volt pump, it pumps out in the water and it pulls the air in the top there. And that will just be sucking air. It sounds just going down, sucks the air down, blows it out. Not only does it aerate the water and right there next to it, but it's stirring up the whole tank. And it just really, it's so simple. Any little battery will do the job. Um, a, a normal little deep discharge battery, what's called like the golf cart battery, will run something like this all day. Uh, very low energy. This is a little siphon we do. I used a plastic pitcher just so I could ask you if it was pitcher perfect. But uh, this is a water valve there on the bottom. And check this out. I'm going to fill this pitcher up with water. And when it hits the top of that standpipe, the water is going to go down. When it goes down, it'll, it'll vortex. You see the little V of the vortex going down? 
that is going to suck air down. Look at all that air down at the bottom. Now what happens now if I take and put a glass or any air type thing, it could be a Coke bottle or a, a glass jar, anything. When I place it over the top of the standpipe, now watch this, I'm gonna place over the standpipe. So I drop the glass, see the water go down and then it breaks. Well now that pitcher will fill up and go down forever and it will stop and start itself and it has no moving parts. But we teach you how to do this with simple off-the-shelf materials, no particular machining or anything with it. You can do it with the basic hand tools. So I, I think you'll find that rather clever and rather interesting. Now, we don't use a little plastic pitcher in our aquaponics system. We're actually in 55-gallon drums, and that'd be a four-inch piece of PVC. But the principle is the same. It'll go up and down. If you do that, then you can aerate your stones in your biofilter bed. When the water goes up, it pushes all the air out, and when it runs down, it sucks all new air in. So simple. This is a little compost tea maker. Now, Natalie and I had to eat a lot of cheese balls just to get that <laughs> container, yes. a lot of them. Yep. But this is a simple device. The air goes in right there where I'm pointing to the hose, and then it goes up. So when the air goes up, it also pumps the water up. Then I take this sack of compost or tea maker, you stick it in there, and then that water is going to turn rich, rich brown because you're pumping air and water through the sack. See how quickly that went brown? Now, that jar will fill up so high, about two-thirds full, and then it will back flush and go down into the aquarium. And what you do is you let this do it for about 24 hours, going up, down, up, down, up, down, this rich compost tea water. And that tea water, now I don't drink it. I do shampoo my hair every now and then, but uh, keep it fluffy. But this is for the plants. And so depending on the quality of your compost that you have, is how nutritious it's going to be. But you ready for this? I've been on all amount of gardens for 21 years. I have never bought fertilizer. You see the tea there? Now she'll fill up so high and she's going to burp backwards and this thing is going to empty down. And it's going to be quite colorful. And the whole tank, the 55 gallon down below, is going to turn that dark brown. We'll add a little molasses syrup to it. That's to feed the bacteria that we're raising. So it's like an incubation. Basically, it's like making yogurt, okay? But it's a liquid, there it is. Now there's your back flush. And then so this thing will back flush and your whole tank will turn brown. And then in the morning, we'll water the place. And so we'll water the lawns, all of our plants, food plants, even ornamentals, everything will get the worm tea water. But we teach again, how to make this out of, you know, any plastic jug or jar and bingo. Oh, how you like that camera work, huh? Anybody getting seasick there? Sorry about that. We just shot this this afternoon. I have to apologize for that. I should have hit the off button on that one. Mm -hmm. But um, here, hopefully we don't we get you too seasick there. But uh, I have to work on my editing skills. This is um, a, a, 50, a 30 gallon aquarium and we build upside down aquariums. We take the aquarium, we turn it upside down, we set it in the fish tank. The fish now come up from the bottom and they look out at me. Yeah, so he can see me coming. Instead of me coming up and all of a sudden startling him and him running, he's much more comfortable because he knows I can't get to him, right? But I'll stick my hand underneath there. By the, by the way, this is one of our airlifts, and we'll have these down at the workshop and show people how to build them and that. It's a good educational thing to do. And that is just two PSI of air, and that's pumping about 150, 200 gallons an hour. The air comes out the top, and the water comes out the white pipe there, and it goes into the 55-gallon aquarium. And it's pumping at that rate 24 hours a day. It has no moving parts and everything. Fish can go right through the pump, doesn't hurt them. And then the water will leave on that two-inch pipe nice and clear out of that radio filter and go into the garden. And so the garden is lush and, and does really well. See how the dark, rich green leaves? There's nothing lacking. This is showing how we grow duckweed and azolla. And uh, when we do that, uh, we're able to feed this to our fish. So it's kind of cute. I go out with this net and then twice a day, I will net up this green and then throw it into the fish pond. Okay, and then the fish will eat it up. It's kind of like turning a horse or cow out on a pasture. Okay, and uh, so it does it. On this, these are more air lifts. These air lifts are lifting water 24 feet high and you see how many bubbles are in there? 
okay? So that super aerates the water up to saturation. And it's a known fact that at a given temperature, how much oxygen? By the way, I kicked the camera over to slow motion. I just like shooting the slow motion stuff. You know, it's just a great excuse to do it. And, uh, but you see, it's a pulsation kind of thing. And so this is an airlift I invented. I sent in for patents for it. But where Natalie and I go overseas, from Hong Kong to Korea to Philippines, American Samoa, Fiji, Tonga, American patents are no good over there. So we ended up giving our patents away to the world. Uh, we just made it public domain. And so everybody can do this. They're all PVC, no moving parts in them, run on air, be solar powered. Uh, it's a way of the future. Um, we've never had a client do air and go back to mechanical pumps. Once you learn to do an air lift, you, you're, you're over the thing. And, uh, but it's good fun to do them. You see there's two pumps there, and each pump is pumping 450 gallons an hour. And that, so that pump, pumps the water. We can pump water around the farm doing this. But, uh, but if you want to learn how to do this, come to our workshops. We just had an open house uh, Sunday, two days ago. Yes. And it was rainy, but we had some science school teachers yes. come. We had some ham radio operators come. Yes. And I tell you what, you have a rainy day, it weeds down the, the crowd size smaller. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, you get the true people yes. out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have a lot of fun with it. Uh, so they were able to walk around. And we're able to go out there and take these things apart and show you them operating. And that, so you catch a free day at Ola Monte Gardens, it can be good fun. This is an aerator, um, we call it a bubblification. And what it does is the water's coming back from the sump pump in that two inch pipe, and then it dumps it into a four inch pipe, it goes underwater, makes a U-turn, comes back up. Now all those bubbles, they're all been absorbed into the water. That overflows there, comes down, I restrict it to two inches there, and then into a three inch, and it does it all over again, goes to the bottom, kicks out the bubbles, and it stirs up the whole tank. And so this tank stays at about eight parts per million uh, aeration on it. Uh, again, there are no moving parts, except for the water's moving. Mm -hmm. Somebody, I said no moving parts. People say, it looks like the water's moving. Yeah, but no moving parts. In other words, it's not a mechanical part going back and forth or spinning and that. So it's a simple. They're doing this on shrimp farms a lot. Okay, so this is our farm at Olamana Garden, and you can see the quality of the water on it. Uh, the fish are happy, they're not running scared of you, I can literally reach and pet them. This is our newest thing. These are circular gardens, and that's a spray nozzle uh, shooting off there. And you'll see there, those sides there are the solid, but we'll drill them out like these blue tanks are here. Okay. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to take a little break here, and we'll show you some more, and I'm going to show you my favorite tool of the week coming up here. So if you stand by, we'll be right back. I just walked by, and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. Hi, Glenn from Olamana Gardens and my co-host Natalie Cash uh, from the farm. She's our farm manager and she keeps my life organized. And she reminded me to um, this invitation to the Hawaii Aquacultural Summit that's coming up here on November 14th. This 16. little $50, huh? November 16th. November 16th? Yes. Okay, get the date straight there. Um, anyway, do you have the uh, website where they can look up the information on that? Handy for it? Um, it's at the um, college. At the college, yep. Um, Hilo College. Yeah. 
Yeah, or anybody and can email me at uh, Glenn at yeah. OlamontaGardens.com. It's great, and we'll forward back over the sign-up information. But we wanted to make sure you understood that this is the first of the planning sessions, and for people that are going to be presenters in that, kind of show us what they got. You might say like TED Talk kind of a thing, and they'll be going on. But it's called the Hawaii Aquaculture Sum Summit Invitation, and it's the Hawaii Strategic Development Corporation is sponsoring this thing. Uh, right so it's really good stuff. Carl, uh, okay. And if you got a pencil handy, Carl, K A R L dot F O O K S at Hawaii dot gov. Or just go me, Glenn at Olamata Gardens, and we'll get you the information to you. And uh, this is going to be the Worldwide Aquaculture Society, Association yeah. Society coming over. This is WAS, W A S. Uh, they are the big boys. They are, you know, thousands and thousands of members around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally I can't attend their conferences because they're in Israel or the South of Africa or Germany or, you know, uh, the plane ticket alone, it stops me from going. But here to have it in our own backyard and we'll be able to participate in it. We're normally presenters at these things, mostly mm -hmm. because of the airlifts more than anything uh, and that, but good fun. Hey, but I promised you the tool of the week and I want to jump to that one just for a moment. When we're doing the aquaponics thing, you wear a lot of water on the ground when we're working and having corded tools is just not a practical thing. Uh, Natalie's always worried about being shocked. We try to use GFI receptacle, but having cords, and we're dealing with kids, elementary school kids and high school kids, electricity and water is kind of a questionable thing. So we did the airlift, so we don't have electricity in our system. So I'm certainly not going to use electrical tool. But this is I, my tool of the week here. This is a, a little machine. It cuts the PVC pipe for me, nice and clean, no little bits of plastic, no cranking, because I could crank it, but Natalie couldn't do it. It would get right to the point she couldn't quite get it all the mm -hmm. way through. It was a bit of a chore on the hand. But these, anybody can do it, they cut nice and clean. And so we really love this little tool. So What is it called, Glenn? Uh, this is called a shear because it shears the pipe right in two. You see as it comes down like this, and it just shears it off. And this one does everything from half inch up to two inch yep. pipe. PVC. It naturally PVC pipe. Yeah, it doesn't work on metal pipe, only on PVC. But it's just such a classic tool, and it's one of those things we use every day. Every day. And, that. and so when we travel and we go do a workshop, a lot of times we'll gift one of these to whoever hosts the workshop, because Quite frankly, it's hard to get it home. You know, they want it. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, wanted to share that with you. And we try to each week show you some special tool that we use in aquaponics mm -hmm. and to assembling our things. But something else that Natalie wanted to share with you today. Natalie, what is this about here? Yeah, so I just wanted people to know that at Olamana Gardens, this is our logo that we came up with. And it's um, mad hot. Steam, steam. Yeah. And so we had some school kids on the on the ground. These are our T-shirts. And a little second grader from Punahou comes up to me, and she says, Mister, what are you mad about? Because she saw my mad T-shirt. She yeah. thought I was mad. But the mad, what's it mean? Make a difference. We're going to make that's difference right. in people's lives. Right. And that's yeah. a phrase that's getting very popular. Mm -hmm. They'll have make a difference in Hawaii Day. They'll go out and you clean up a, you'll make a difference, uh, clean up a beach or go, you know, clean up a taro patch or yeah. make a difference in your community, right? Yeah. And that's what we want to do when people come out to our farm or we go to a workshop. We want it to be worth their day and we want to make a difference. Yeah. How about the hot? hot hands on training. Right. We do training. very little PowerPoint <laughs> presentations, right? right? It's better to grab a tool and learn to cut the pipe, learn to put it together, swing a rubber mallet in that. How about the steam? Yeah, steam. So it's a special um, part of our teaching and training, mm -hmm. science, technology, engineering, agriculture, and math. And by because. adding the A, it brings the other four to life. Because yes. otherwise, studying engineering can be dry. Uh, you know, some of the sciences can be dry. The math, mm -hmm. well, 
not many people really love math class, right? No. So, but when you do the aquaculture and the aquaponics in there mm -hmm. or any agriculture, it gives purpose to the other four. It sure does. So Natalie and I were in the Philippines about three years ago, mm -hmm. and Consuelo Foundation here in Hawaii sent us down there mm -hmm. with the team from University of Hawaii. Dr. Benny Ron yes. was in charge of the group. Yeah. And they sent us down there, and we were on a 19-day trip. Mm -hmm. And on the 17th day, I was so proud the Manila newspaper came out with three-inch headlines, mm -hmm. and it says, Memorandum of Understanding Between the Military, the Department of Education, Social, Education, and the Agriculture. Five departments wrote a Memorandum of Understanding, and they funded over 5,000 schools in the Philippines to embrace the STEAM program. Yeah. So they, they wrote a simple rule that anywhere in the law that it said STEM, S-T-E-M, it would now read with an A in it. Yeah. Now we did that in 17 days in the Philippines, changed the national policy, and they yeah. embraced it, okay? Mm -hmm. We brought it back to Hawaii, you know, welcome back wow. to your hometown, right? Here, it took us two years to get yeah. the A in, and the A has double meaning here in Hawaii. It's agriculture and arts. arts. And that's because so many of our high schools were doing the STEM program, but that dropped out the music, the band, all the arts classes, theater, all of that fell by the wayside, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is kind of odd because you go through four years of high school, then you go to college, and what's the first thing you do the first two years in college? Liberal arts, yeah. okay? And, you know, with, and all the humanities and that. So here we are graduating high school students without the humanities, without the art. So when we partnered up with the school teachers, we did a similar law here in Hawaii. Wherever the law says STEM, now it reads STEAM. And it's a double A, but that looks kind of corny to have a double A. So the A means what it needs to in the context, okay? Mm -hmm. But it really brought back, uh, educationally wise, the all over the world, they're trying to do a cross training. So if let's say if Natalie was a biology teacher and I was a math teacher, they're telling us we need to find a project to work on together. And it turned out aquaponics is the darling of the educational world. I mean, yeah, you're growing some food, yeah, you're growing some fish, but it's all the engineering that goes into it, the math, how many fish can you put and how many gallons of water, what is the rate of oxygenation, all the percentages, the ratios. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you have the math, the biology, the chemistry people, even the economic people coming up. Because if you do an aquaponics aquaculture, the purpose is to feed yourself and or be a business. And that brings in the math big time. Yes. And, uh, so, and the best yeah. was safe for last, Glenn. What's that? Our logo here, mm -hmm. you see it's um, blue. Fish. Aqua, ponics, where you have the plants growing, aquaponics. Now this was done at uh, um, uh, Toloi Father Foundation. Rock, yeah, Father Rocky's place right. for his compound called Toloi Foundation. Yeah. A little eighth grade student, a street kid, an orphan yeah. kid, okay, mm -hmm. living at the orphanage. He painted that image 14 feet long on a wall. Yeah. And we went there and we took a picture of it and we came home, we wrote them, and we're helping to fund that young man's education for us yeah. through high school and that for as a permission to use that as our company logo. Mm -hmm. But it's really neat. Half water, half plants, aquaponics. Aquapon. And uh, in eighth grade, and he's doing that already. He's a national graphic artist. And artist. he has it all over the aquaponics. Yep. There is not a place that you walk around That's where right. you don't see these beautiful pictures yeah. all over his aquaponics. Because an acre of concrete over. tanks and runways and concrete fish tank, he has painted everything. He sure and, has. Uh, when I left on, after my first trip, when I went back, I was really surprised. There was one tank that was four feet wide and three feet high and about 50 feet long, and I'd left two pipes sticking <laughs> out about two inches long. And I came yes, back yes. and I walk around the corner and I look over and I see this thing, and yep. he has painted a diver's yes. face uh -huh. with 
but holding Goggles. a binoculars yeah. with the hands on it, and it's three-dimensional. <laughs> and I, I just couldn't focus on it that for a few minutes. Cool. That was really cool. But that he did a lot cool. of that kind of work. So we really enjoy it. And that, yeah. that uh, Toloi Foundation went from 240 live-in students. Now that they're doing, they have four acres of aquaponics yes. in there, and they're fish raising. They're now up to 860 kids living in yes. residence. And each child from kindergarten all the way through high school, yeah. in fact, they have a two-year vocational college yes. on the campus After. afterwards that everybody works one hour a day on the farm for that sure they do. get three meals a day yes they you know do. and they learn something yes they really do. interesting is any of the students everybody any of the nuns on the place everybody can tell you how aquaponics yeah. works mm -hmm. yeah they take it seriously there yeah so anyway th look up that uh, for the hawaii summit coming up here november 16th yes yeah I think you'll really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have workshops here in Kona at the University of Nations. We look forward to you all joining us. Thank you for, our, this is Think Tech Hawaii, and we really appreciate you watching.